Have you ever thought about how your waste affects the ecosystem around you? Plastic debris in the Bronx River has historically deteriorated the health of the river. Being one of the top three issues within the Bronx River, our organization makes sure to pay very close attention to the existence of plastics in our waterway. Human health can be affected heavily by plastic pollution in local waterways, namely by microplastics. We may not realize it, but plastic pollution in drinkable waterways, which excludes the Bronx River, can lead to ingestion of microplastics. These tiny particles can impact our health in ways we haven't even begun to understand. Plastic waste within communities continues to grow. Limited access to curbside waste baskets, recyclables containers, and green spaces are issues that are present in environmental justice communities like the Bronx. The effects of plastic pollution on wildlife is definitely much more popular in the media, but we seldom get to see it in real life. Birds, fish, crabs, and other organisms are directly impacted by our waste, and occasionally we see this play out right in front of us. Project Waste, otherwise known as Waterway and Street Trash Elimination, addresses floatable trash, one of the three major water quality issues on the Bronx River. Volunteers participate in real science through hands-on experiences. The information we collect helps find the source and stop trash from entering the river in the first place. The project engages stewards by promoting outreach to local businesses whose products end up in and along the river, especially uniting messaging around the harm to our waterways caused by non-biodegradable products. In 2019, Project Waste was expanded with the addition of the Street Trash Surveys, which surveyed sidewalks on the streets adjacent to the Bronx River in both Westchester and the Bronx. These new data provided useful insights into the movement of trash from the streets into the river and where most trash in the river may be originating from. A total of 17,792 items were counted during these surveys, with 69% coming from Bronx streets. Unlike the trash found in the river, the litter on the street is dominated by cigarette butts and plastic fragments and pieces, followed by food and candy wrappers. Trash booms are floating barriers that collect floating debris, tree branches, leaves, and other floating waste. As of June 2016, two trash booms were installed within the lower eight miles of the Bronx River, one at Muskrat Cove, 233rd Street, and the other at Concrete Plant Park. The Muskrat Cove boom is where our volunteer boom cleanup events occur, as that boom is completely monitored and maintained by us, the Bronx River Alliance. The boom at Concrete Plant Park is maintained by the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. They come and clean out the boom when it is full, and they use a boat to do it. In 2019, staff, students, and volunteers removed a total of 22,922 items from the Muskrat Cove trash boom alone. Of this amount, almost 80% of it was made up of styrofoam pieces or packing pellets. Plastic drink bottles and things like cigarette butts made up about 9% and about 5.5% respectively. These percentages aren't what you'd expect, and they certainly don't look like what you find littering the sidewalk. So, how do we know where this waste is actually coming from? In 2018, Westchester Parks Foundation added a boom in the city of White Plains, and in 2019, they added another one in the town of Tuckahoe. These extra booms now provide us with more detailed information about the distribution of trash along the entire length of the Bronx River, including at what location certain pollutants are entering the river. This is how we learned that styrofoam waste first enters the river right up near its headwaters. In 2019, the Bronx River Alliance started work on a new research project, a microplastics pilot study. Research has revealed that this is a looming threat to both wildlife and human health. But what are microplastics? Microplastics are plastic particles smaller than 5 millimeters in diameter. They are too small to be captured by water treatment facilities and are present throughout the environment. 
Where could such prevalent yet invisible pollution come from? Actually, very close to home, as in your actual home. They come from a variety of sources, including plastic objects and pieces of styrofoam that are breaking down, products like whitening toothpaste, and even our washing machines as they wash our clothes. Our pilot study determined the feasibility of conducting this research in the Bronx River. First, we cast a plankton net, a net made with a very fine mesh, into the river and held it in place or trawled it slowly for 15 minutes. Then, whatever was caught in the net was washed out and poured through a series of sieves, which look like tea strainers, to remove larger detritus like plant material and pieces of trash. Finally, the remaining material was dried, poured into a petri dish, and stained with a special type of dye. Under a blue light, the stained microplastic particles glowed brightly, with different types of plastic glowing in different shades of red, yellow, and orange. All steps of this procedure can be replicated by either staff or students, and will allow us to learn more about pollution in the Bronx River. With critical filter feeders found in the river, including our restored oyster reef and precious alewife, which we release annually, these findings could help us understand what impacts our waste may be having on local wildlife. Some Bronx residents also regularly catch and eat wildlife from the river, so these findings could reveal that they're potentially putting their health at risk as well. Wildlife is greatly affected by plastic pollution in our waters. Every day people are throwing away single-use plastic items, and as we mentioned earlier, styrofoam is one of the largest players in marine waste. For a bird, a fish, a crab, or even turtles, it is extremely easy for them to mistake a piece of plastic for food, especially when it is all floating on the surface of our rivers. Scientists have found plastic fragments in the stomachs of multiple aquatic species, including 86% of sea turtle species, 44% of seabird species, and 43% of marine mammal species. These animals are not meant to ingest plastic, and doing so can usually be fatal to the animal. Since they cannot digest these plastics and it blocks up their digestive tract, they end up starving. Not only can these plastics affect the animals, but the toxic chemicals released by these plastics can be ingested by humans as the toxins move their way up the food chain. While there are strict fishing restrictions for organisms caught from the Bronx River, these same health risks are present in many organisms caught from our oceans as well. It is extremely important to take care of the organisms that live in our ecosystems because they are what allows the ecosystem to maintain its balance and biodiversity. Without this balance, the ecosystem would crumble and humans would absolutely feel the effects of this over time. Without wildlife, there is no way we would be able to survive the way we do now. So this is why we are asking you to think about your choices when you come across single-use plastics. There are so many different impacts that arise from plastic being in our waterways. Human health, community health, and wildlife health are all affected. We all need to do our part to ensure that we are protecting all three of these aspects, not only for the environment, but for ourselves. It is our responsibility to create a sustainable future. For more information, please visit our website at www.bronxriver.org. Thank you, and we hope to see you around the Bronx River soon.